That's something that Duquesne should take very lightly. They need to stay very focused defensively, especially shutting down dynamic players such as Megan Nemec. Although she only has four goals on this season, she's a force to be reckoned with, and I'm sure is going to try to get the ball in the back of the net today. And then as for Loyola, Loyola needs to maintain possession this season. We've talked a lot about how Loyola will step in, win the ball, but then will qu quickly turn it over with a sloppy pass or a... And yeah, here we go for Grace Dressler. So Grace Dressler, who had been a big part of this team over the last couple of years. Great moments in goal, helping the team to the NCAA tournament on a couple of occasions, but injuries for this season not able to play. So getting this moment where officially gets the start today, and now Nia Lipkins will come in to play in goal. And of course, she has been very good as well for the Ramblers. So Duquesne in the red, Loyola in the white, as this one underway here. First all-time meeting between these two programs. Duquesne right now tied for sixth in the Atlantic 10 standings with UMass inside that top eight. Well, Loyola on the outside looking in, they're gonna need, it looks like, to run the table here in these final three games in order to have a chance to qualify for the A-10 tournament. Amanda Cassidy has a cross blocked. It'll be a throw. Now, Jenna, you know, you obviously played the sport at a high level for a long time. Now, of course, with Loyola, enjoyed mostly success, but <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there was always hiccups along the road. How, how did you, how do players deal with a situation like this, if you're Loyola, having gone four consecutive games, not able to score, and it's not as if you're losing three mm -hmm. nothing, four nothing, and being totally dominated, yeah. you're losing these one nothing games. How do you stay mentally in it? Yeah, I think even one of my keys to the game was Loyola needs to stay composed for 90 minutes. Although they've had a rough start of the A10 season, there's no need for them to worry about it as of yet. Obviously, they need to make it to the tournament, but. As we see in games, they string together some good parts, but they haven't been able to string a full 90 minutes together. So they just need to stay composed, do what they do best, keep possession, get the ball wide, get the ball in line, get across, and then find the back of the net. Duquesne preseason number 10 team in the A-10. So they're outperforming their preseason prognostication so far. Olivia Nava cross. It went off to Sabolka, bounces around Kirsten Pelikid. Play being whistled down, though. Offside was the call during all that. So it'll be Duquesne taking over possession. Maddie Neundorfer, sophomore keeper from Monroeville, Pennsylvania. Talked to Coach Al Alvine a couple of days ago. Bided her time. A couple of years with the program. Only appeared in two games before taking over the starter role as a third-year sophomore. Hardest working player on the team. According to Coach Alvine, first out for practice and the last one to leave, much like Jenna Ross was. <laughs> Here's Cammie Taylor with the ball for Duquesne. Turns it over to Kirsten Pelican, who gets the start on her senior day. Megan Nebick, also a senior. Abby Swanson, Amanda Cassidy. So, you know, a little bit of pride on the line, I think, as well for some of these seniors in their penultimate game at Loyola Soccer Park. Sabolka driving the ball to the left side of the box and will earn the Ramblers the corner kick. And Jenna, this getting corner kicks has never been Loyola's problem. Nope. It's what comes afterwards. Yep. Barry Bimby talked about having to tweak their set piece opportunities. And obviously, Abby Swanson is usually the go to person on these opportunities. So we'll see what they're going to kick up today. Olivia Nab will go over to take it. Also a senior from Chandler, Arizona, 65th career game. 57th career start be a right footed ball see if the Ramblers can execute Pelican try to get a right foot on it Swanson couldn't keep it in the box cleared out by Jamie Arejo the junior from New Jersey who is ninth in the A-10 in points per game with her five goals one assist Allie Kilberg and we want to talk about her making now her <laughs> first start of the season. Got back into the lineup over the last two games. ACL injury in the spring. Kept her out until this point. 
gets to play here at home on senior day as well. Yeah, it's her second ACL tear, so her second comeback. Came back from this one in five months. Loyola is blessed to have her back. Her and Elena Abel are a great team, and Allie Kilberg is one of the best defensive players I have ever seen. Elena Abel. Gonna play it direct. Megan Nemec wins this ball against two defenders. Into the box, a shot in, oh. a save by Maddie Neundorfer, who held her ground, and Nemec ends up shooting it right into her chest. Yeah, Coach Alvine said one of the keys to the game for Duquesne was staying focused defensively. As you see there, Megan Nemec's gonna be putting on that high pressure, and Duquesne needs to make sure that they aren't making those mistakes. This is a Duquesne team that's very young. Start between four and six true freshmen per game. Looking at the lineup today, you've got Brown, Kraftchik, Lavecchia, Muir, and Matisse all in the lineup as true freshmen. But they also are able to spread the offense around. 12 different players this year have tallied either a goal or an assist. 15 goals in 12 games, a 1.25 average. They don't take a ton of shots, but when they do, they're accurate. 11th in the country in Shrissy, so they might be a bit choosy, but they get them on frame at a higher rate than most. Sabolka just trying to get into the middle and eventually it's taken here by Margie Brown, true freshman from Ohio. Turn back over to Olivia Nab for the Ramblers. Comes out wide to Amanda Cassidy. Cassidy oh. and Nemec just couldn't get the right foot on it. And a ball coming our way towards our door that was opening for a moment and almost <laughs> could have found its way in. Nemec. I would say out of the games that we've done together, Scott, this is definitely Loyola's best start that we've seen. They've gotten a couple crosses off. They're definitely possessing the ball, I would say, more than Duquesne at the moment. They're getting the ball wide and getting that end line, and we're already at our second corner kick of the day. Olivia Rhodes will take it from this near side. Played it the full 90, six of the last seven games for the Ramblers as Olivia Rhodes, a junior from Portland, Oregon. Left-footed ball coming. And was headed near post, but curls off the side netting for a Duquesne goal kick. Al Alavine, 11th year as the Duquesne head coach. 11 more wins, three different times over his stint as the head coach. Program record, 12 wins back in 2015, which led to an A-10 championship and a trip to the NCAAs. Here's Mackenzie Muir on wide for Margie Brown. Brown with the right footed ball towards the penalty spot, comes free and cleared out by the Ramblers. Duquesne in three and two record on the road this year. And Loyola very uncharacteristic, two and four record here at home. Yeah, I think with the conference tournament being right around the corner, both teams are kind of sitting in a spot where anything could really happen. Loyola needs to get a win under their belt, and Duquesne needs to keep winning as well to make it into the tournament. By the way, of course, we haven't really referenced the fact that this game got underway an hour later <laughs> than scheduled. Yeah. We'll, we'll call it an official mishap. Yes. But officials got here. Officials got here as uh, quickly as they could. And our hats are off to them for hustling over and getting this game started an hour after the scheduled time. Ashley Rodriguez won that ball for the Dukes. It's into the box, Arejo. Arejo across. Chest to get down, Brown. Abby Swanson creating that turnover, though. Here's Kirsten Pelican. Over the top, Nemec. Played away from her by Eva Lavecchia, a true freshman from Northport, New York. Converted from an outside back to a center back already 
in her freshman season. All state out of St. Anthony's High School in New York. Nemec with Rodriguez matching up on our defensively. That's the that's the task Rodriguez will have most of this day. The best one on one defender for Duquesne. Knocked out from the box by Ali Campanella, a first year Duquesne player who transferred from Ohio. As that comes in for Noonderfer, and we're scoreless here in the eleventh minute. Just two games left in the regular season after today. Both these teams play Thursday and Sunday to wrap up the regular season. The conference tournament scheduled for the following Friday slash Saturday, depending upon how the schedules work out. Top eight teams make it. The top four will host those corner final games on that Friday, Saturday. And as we saw off the top, Duquesne is inside that top eight right now, tied for sixth with UMass, while Loyola right now on the outside looking in at 10th place. And we didn't go through and do all the math, but really if you just eyeball it, the Ramblers more or less probably need to take home a full three points in these final three games yeah. to have the chance to move into that top eight. But we got a foul in the middle of the park called on Cammy Taylor. Elena Abel will restart the play. Another foul drawn. Olivia Nab will set up for the free kick for the Ramblers. Chilly, mostly overcast day here in Rogers Park, Chicago. As Nab curls it, Pelican headed towards the penalty spot. Nemec, oh, the shot oh, and a huge a save. save. Noondorfer, uh, excuse me, <laughs> robbing Megan Nemec. And it's just a case here for the Ramblers that this is one that uh, maybe most of the time is a goal, but terrific stop. Yeah, it wasn't a great first ball, but they kept it alive there. Nemec took a shot, and Noondorfer with that great athleticism used both her leg and her arm to stop that shot. Abel up the sideline, wins the throw for the Ramblers. But, Jenna, to your point that you made a few minutes ago mm -hmm. out of the games that you and I have called here at Loyola Soccer Park, it's been slow starts for the Ramblers. Yep. This is not the case today, already with two a plus opportunities to score mm -hmm. i think when you get down to it they know that they have to win these games to make it to the conference tournament this would be the first time in five years that they haven't made it to the conference tournament so they got a lot to play for today and they know that they can't come out sleeping and they got to come out hard cammy taylor sends that one into the box and picked up by nia lipkins who officially does not get the start today but has started all prior 15 games fifth in the a10 and goals against average 0 .87. An 800 save percentage, which is sixth. Most of the damage that teams have done against Loyola has come in the second half. Nine of 13 goals scored against the Ramblers have scored uh, in the second frame. Nemec with the speed, drops oh. it back. Cassidy could not get the touch that she wanted. Rhodes follows it up back into the box, and it'll be a corner as a clear attempt by Lavecchia goes awry. Yeah, those are two opportunities you don't want to miss there. Cassidy missing that shot, and then Lavecki missing that clearance. That's This is another big opportunity for the Ramblers. Again, we keep saying that Duquesne's one of their keys to the game was staying focused defensively, and I think they need to turn it up a notch a little bit more against the Ramblers. Again, these teams had to hang out on the field for base, an extra hour, waiting for this one to get going as Rhodes will serve it too far high and out of play. And so we were questioning you know, how these two teams would react now after waiting an hour to start the yep. game. And Loyola, we'll, 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 we'll say we're watching from, from the booth, yep. kind of the warm-up, and Duquesne yeah. was still going through an intense warm-up. Mm -hmm. Loyola was, we'll say, a little bit looser during yep. this delay. And conventional wisdom made us think that, oh, well, Duquesne might come out and be the team that's yeah. 
jumping out ahead, but it's Loyola apparently being looser is now kind of propelled first 15 minutes. Yeah, both teams are warming up. Then Loyola kind of took a break, kind of seemed a little bit looser while Duquesne stayed in it. It's looked mentally tough the whole time, but you know, sometimes you never know what that'll do. You never know what an extra hour is going to do to teams. And today it looked like the Ramblers came out harder and ready to win. Loyola, of course, had the senior day ceremonies happen a little bit uh, about 12.45 Central Time that was happening and the game time was scheduled for one o'clock. So after that, they sort of stayed loose on the field, but not uh, going through a lot of drills, just kind of in four or five different groups of players on the field, just knocking the ball around, having a good time, it looked like. So that approach has worked out well so far. The sun is peeking out. Megan Nemec crosses it. Sabolka fights through, gets one angled towards goal. Obviously didn't get a great shot on it, but again, Rambler's offense is pressuring Duquesne uh, early and often. They're on that cross. Nemec really only had Sabolka in the box. I think Loyola needs to get up and get more players there near the PK spot. Nemec's going to look to cut it back, and then we need more players up there. Abel will knock it aside. Scott Sudikoff, Jenna Ross with you. 8-10 on ESPN. See, in the early going, three shots on goal for the Ramblers. I'd say one terrific save by Maddie Nundorfer, another good one. And then this most recent one was on the easier side for a keeper, helped out mm -hmm. by her defense. Ramblers have had a couple of corner kick chances as well. Duquesne looking to find some offense now. Duke's coming off a win at LaSalle two Sundays ago. And then a draw at home against Davidson. Last, sa uh, last Sunday, of course, Davidson having a terrific surprise type of season. Entered the day in fourth place with a 4-2-2 two two conference record. They won a game here, of course, one nothing over Loyola. Part of that, the, the first game of the four-game stretch that we had referenced that Loyola has dropped 1-0 matchups. Sabolka sheds a defender. Trying to get out wide around Lavecchia. And yeah, that's blocked. Nicely done defensively by Eva Lavecchia, who comes up a little hobbled. But again, the Loyola crowd's happy with what they're seeing from the Ramblers and another play where you know, they're being forceful driving towards the box. Yep, Jamie Sabolka has lots of speed, as you saw there. She didn't really have... Many moves, she just took one pa one touch past her defender and Lovecki did a great job of covering back. Lovecki it out with a big clear. And Lipkins will grab it on the edge of the box. Transfer from St. John's. Taking over the role as the starting keeper this year for Loyola. All seven of Loyola's losses have been by one goal, but I think if it wasn't for Nia Lipkins, I think some of those games would have been more than one goal, that's for sure. And it's six of them, not only by one goal, but 1-0 setbacks. The other loss was a 3-2 loss at St. Louis, a game that Loyola, of course, had a lead in. And it looked as if they were in line to knock off the number 10 team in the country on the road. Came back a couple of days later at GW, beat them 3-0. Ramblers felt pretty good about things coming out of that game, but then hit the slide. Rhodes. Sabolka. Sabolka fires one, and Pelican was heading in towards the six as well. If there was any rebound there, Kirsten Pelican may have had a tap-in goal. And now Ashley Rodriguez rushes forward. Fifth-year senior from Woodbridge, Virginia. Can't connect on that pass. It'll be a goal kick and a substitution for Duquesne. Brianna Moore will come on. Another true freshman appearing in her 13th game. Big loss for Duquesne. We don't know for a fact if she's not available today. We didn't get uh, a full word on it, but Sarah Wilkinson, a fifth-year senior midfielder, got injured in their game last Sunday. 
big part of Al Alvine's team. And talking with him on Thursday, said wasn't sure of her availability for the game today, but obviously not in the starting lineup and don't know if she is available to play tonight or, or not. Nemec. Cassidy. Rodriguez goes shoulder to shoulder with her and gets the goal kick for her keeper. Nicely done by Rodriguez. Yeah, in the mess, last minute or so here, Duquesne's had two good opportunities coming off counterattacks from Loyola's mistakes, and they weren't quite executed very well, so I think that's going to be where they become successful today, especially when Loyola is doing so well offensively, is countering them when they do make those mistakes. Ball is out for Loyola throw. Ramblers will host UMass on Thursday, which as I mentioned, UMass tied for sixth with Duquesne, so that'll be an important game, definitely for UMass as well, in terms of trying to solidify their spot in the tournament. Oh. Here's a chance for Duquesne, and Limpkins oh. comes out, the ball is loose as she collided with Arajo. And play continues on as the Ramblers able to scramble defensively. And now play will be stopped as Arejo slow to get up. Lipkins looks to be okay. And now Jamie Arejo looks okay as well. Junior from Tabernacle, New Jersey, who didn't play a couple of weeks ago against LaSalle. But has been back out there now these last two. Like I said there, that was another defensive mistake mistake made by Loyola. Uh, Jamie just kind of got a touch on it. And again, the Ramblers need to be thanking Nia Lipkins because she came out and made another great save. Play will resume here with a free kick from the Ramblers. Swanson. Mackenzie Leader knocking it off of Pelican. Arejo will be, or check that, that's Muir who is fouled by Swanson. Mackenzie Muir who has three goals in her freshman season. All three of them have been game winners. United Soccer Coaches All-American out of Avon High School in Ohio. Yeah, Coach Alvine said he had high expectations for her coming in and she hasn't disappointed them at all. Plays that box-to-box -box midfielder role for the Dukes. Yeah, I think in college soccer, coaches, you can't really know what to expect with freshmen coming in, obviously. Everyone that's coming into D1 soccer was probably very good on their club teams or their high school teams. So coming into college soccer, it's a little bit different. The pace is way higher. So having her coming and not disappointing those expectations is very big for her. Past the midway point of the first half. Ramblers and Dukes for the first time ever. Senior day today for Loyola. Duquesne made the trip on Friday. They took, they busted from Pittsburgh to Chicago and took in some of the sights and sounds of the city. Went on a, I think it was a boat tour. Yeah, I saw yesterday. a boat tour on, a, on one of their players' TikToks. And we know how big the TikTok uh, <laughs> world is with A-10 soccer. Yep. Saw that uh, with Dayton a couple of weeks ago. Now the boat tour to Chicago River, takes about near uh, to, to Navy Pier and Lake Michigan. Olivia Rhodes, left-footed corner coming for the Ramblers. That's not the type of corner kick she probably wanted there. Now is an opportunity for a counterattack, but... Oh, thought Nab had yep. stopped that chance, but then she had a miscue. And now Mom gets a chance uh, to play a through ball, but too much pace on it for Maya Matisa as Lipkins will pick it up. Of course, Barry Bimby, a Pittsburgh native, and was an assistant coach at Pittsburgh 
2007 to 2010. Now Alvon has been with Duquesne for 11 years and he played his oh. college days at Robert Morris. So just, just Pittsburgh. Might have an eye on the Steelers game as well. <laughs> Maybe that's what they were doing during the delay. Another corner for Loyola. Jenny, you were bringing up last year on Senior Day, the Ramblers in the match against Missouri State, just over 20 corner kicks in that game and yep. could not score. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> Loyola's kind of cursed with their Senior Days. We, or Loyola lost, or tied last year, then it lost. It was we for you it last was we. year. For yes. <laughs> Sadly lost, or tied Missouri State last year, then lost the year before that to Evansville. So, again, these corner kicks, you talked about it, Last year, senior day, we had 22 corner kicks. Now they've had four or five, four or five already, corner yeah. kicks today. And I don't want to say the word disappointing, but it's coming to the point where Loyola gets these opportunities, but they don't do anything on them. It's a waste. In college soccer, these opportunities they get, they could be big deals, and they just don't seem to be executing anything on them. Pelican, Nemec, has Cassidy to her left. Swanson entering the box as well. Blocked by Rodriguez, it'll be another corner for Loyola. What has to change here for these corners? Honestly, they just need to be devoted to getting their head on the ball or anything on the ball. When you see teams that are successful on corner kick, it's because they have players that are wanting to get their head on it and are fighting to get on it. When you look at these balls, some of the balls aren't that good, but then when they are good, you just don't see as much of a fight. From Nab, there's he, oh. somebody getting the body on it, but that it, was to the not side the <laughs> of the net. That was to the side of the net. Not in the goal. And went behind the goal, so just a optical illusion, no goal. Yep. That's been that, it, let's be honest, it's been that type of season for the Ramblers. Yep. Everybody from us here in the booth to the crowd, Looking at that from our vantage point, looks like a goal, but sometimes our eyes play <laughs> tricks on us, and that's the case there. See, again, uh, then, again there, the Dukes have a great opportunity. They see the chance, but their placement on the ball just isn't where it needs to be. But even though Loyola didn't score on that corner, that's kind of what you're talking about, though. At least yes. somebody got to the ball, yep. got an effort towards where there's been too many corner kicks that have just been wayward yep. or just nothing coming out of it towards the goal. Mm -hmm. See there, Abby Swanson is the target player for the Ramblers. She got her head on it. It just took her fighting to get on the ball for her to get her head on it and maybe next time it'll actually go in the net and not <laughs> us thinking it is and it's not. <laughs> Everybody watching at home probably f was right there with us thinking that was in the back of the net. Matisa driving Towards the corner, gets off the cross. Allie Kilberg playing the defense right now over there. And that's in towards the six, not any trouble for Nia Lipkins. Nia Lipkins, last time we saw the Ramblers here, she had a season high eight saves in the 1-0 loss against Dayton. She had big save outputs against St. Louis, a 3-2 mm -hmm. loss. And yep. So and you said it, a couple of games where they've lost that instead of one goal losses could have been two or three goal setbacks. So, yep. you know, Ramblers have been in it just about every game, or not just about, they have been in it every game. Yep. I know it isn't the season the Ramblers were hoping to be having, but for Nia Lipkins, she has come in and been a powerhouse for the Ramblers. Her first season as a Rambler, has been great for them, and it was a great addition for the Ramblers, like I said before. Without Lipkins, I think these games could have been multiple goal losses for the Ramblers. Margie Brown trying to set something up with Maya Matisa. Brown wins it back for the Dukes. Dukes last year were Ooh, only... That was a rough, rough one. Both players look okay. Sabolka and Brianna Moore. Yep, both up. 
mentioning the Dukes last year, only won two conference games. They were 2-7-1, 4-10-2 overall. So an improvement this year. Yeah, Sabolka, As, yeah. half step late there. Yep. I think we're going to see a very physical game. Like we said, both teams are kind of fighting to make their way into the conference tournament, and it's kind of do or die at this point. So you're going to see some physicality and some probably a lot of fouling in these upcoming games. Free kick here for the Dukes. Ball served in, but off target. Cold kick coming for Lipkins and the Ramblers. Loyola has gone 18, eight and two now here at home over the last four seasons, but half of those eight losses have come this year. The A-10 has definitely been a test for the Ramblers, that's for sure. And Barry Bimby told us bluntly at the start of the year and as the year has gone on that this is what we expected, this is what we wanted. Yep. They heightened competition. They had hoped to be a couple of more wins on the board, but I don't think they're surprised by how things have gone mm -hmm. in terms of how much uh, the other teams in the league have brought the challenge to them and certainly a target on their back as well. Not only being the newcomer, but being the newcomer coming in and getting a lot of hype as well because they were picked to be third yep. in the preseason poll. Yeah, I think coming off a four-peat championship in the Missouri Valley, I think Loyola would have hoped to have a better start in the A-10. And I think the A-10, they didn't underestimate Loyola no, at all. And not at all. they're proving that you're new to the league and we got to show you what's up. Sabolka loses the battle with Brianna Moore. And now Moore takes over the halfway That's line on the counter. Ball. Matisa tracks it down. A couple of the players heading towards the top of the box. Matisa enters the box and good slide tackle to oh. free that one up by Abel. This is a great counterattack opportunity for the Ramblers as Duquesne, two players took each other out and now you just gotta go with speed. Kirsten Pelican out wide for Nemec into the box. Nemec to the far post. Pelican turns, shoots, oh. blocked. I think that may have been headed inside that far post, if not for that block. Yep. See, the Ramblers statistically have had the advantage thus far. Scott Sudikoff, Jenna Ross with you. 8-10 on ESPN here in Chicago. A game that had an hour delay. Swanson through oh. in the volley by Cassidy off targets. Loyola is definitely playing their style of game. We've seen in the past couple games more kickball style today. They're playing way more possession, getting the ball wide, getting the ball in for a cross. They just need to clean up the composure in the last play. Whereas Duquesne, again, their key was staying focused defensively. I still think they need to clean it up a little bit there. Turned over. Nemec stays strong against Lavecchia. Here's Rhodes. Rhodes, diagonal. Good job by Rodriguez to get her head on it. It's going to be a corner, but Rodriguez, that could have been a, a tougher situation to deal with if that got through to Nab on the other side to set something up. It will be a corner. Nab took the last corner from this spot where we saw Swanson push it just wide on the far post. This time a volley mm. wide Pelican. Get a feeling if and when Loyola scores, especially mm -hmm. today, there's going to be just a, 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 a release of a, an eruption <laughs> from the crowd yes. and from the players just because <laughs> it has been three weeks. Yes, for sure. They need it. I think it'll give them some momentum that they've been missing in the past couple games. But then again, it could go the same for the Duquesne side. I think if they get the ball in the back of the net, the momentum will kind of shift their way for that's, sure. Yeah, that's the thing with Duquesne. I'm sure Al Alvine isn't thrilled that his team's giving up a lot of these chances, but mm -hmm. he looks up at the scoreboard and hey, it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. And yep. then if one of these counters turn into a Duke's goal, you're right. That's going to just deflate the balloon possibly for the Ramblers. For sure. 
And then the Ramblers' last two games, they've gone down one to nothing and haven't been able to get anything back. So Duquesne just needs to link together just one good section and then get the ball in the back of the net. And who knows, maybe they will take over the momentum of the game. Free kick. Headed out from the top of the box. Rodriguez moves it ahead for Muir. Mackenzie Muir. One, two into the box, trying to get something going, but Lipkins out to grab it. Ramblers have Ellis Skelton waiting to come on at the next stoppage. One thing I think Duquesne is lacking offensively is when they get the ball, there's not a lot of movement from their players up top. It's just kind of they're running in the direction they're going. I think if they start to switch up their runs and find uh, space behind the defenders, they could become more successful offensively. So this is a Duquesne team that through all the research that has to be done by looking at everybody's roster across Division One soccer, that. Uh, probably have the most true freshmen on any roster out of any Division I team in mm -hmm. the country. 17. 17 <laughs> true <laughs> freshmen. As yeah. There's one of them right there, Maya Matisa, who... A little shaken up, checking her uh, nose and under her eye a little bit there. One of her teammates, Jamie Arejo, and Everybody circling around her. It looks like maybe a maybe a contact lens issue or just an eye issue because looks like they're getting her some uh, <laughs> solution. Yep, contact lens. Getting it back in there. If that lens fell on the turf, that's gonna be hard to find, right? <laughs> Better that than a nose issue, I would say. Yeah, I was going to say, at first I was thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking, nope, checking the nose, hopefully not bleeding. But just the get the contact back in there for Maya Matisa, freshman from Lebanon, Ohio. Goals this year against Ohio and LaSalle. One of those 17 true, fr I mean, that's mind-blowing, 17. Yeah, at that, I've never heard of that number. I mean, I've heard of the number 17, <laughs> but Jenna. for a freshman class have 17, Jenna that's being introduced crazy. to the number 17 today. <laughs> You learn something new every day. Mm -hmm. Just thought it went 16 to 18. Huh? <laughs> no idea. 9.55 left, first half, free kick here for the Dukes in a scoreless game. Coming towards the near sideline and it'll be a throw for Duquesne. Oh. Taylor Harrison wins that ball. Comes back to Ashley Rodriguez, though. Rodriguez barely comes off the field for the Dukes. She's played the full 90, 10 of 12 games this year, and eight consecutive games she has done that. Fifth year senior. And it's clear why she's been very active defensively, but also gets up in the attack for Duquesne. So I think Coach expressed her as a warrior, so. She's definitely been that so far today, especially yeah. having to guard Megan Nemec. Also said a generous five foot three on the uh, the roster listings. She doesn't look that small out there. Maybe she's five two, so it's a yeah. you know, generous. A generous. We could all use you know we're, we're okay. Everyone says maybe an inch or two taller than they really are. It's a good ball as well. It's a good step by Olivia Nab. Margie Brown. Gets free and will launch it high and wide. Now Ella Skelton will come on for the Ramblers. Freshman from Gurney, Illinois. It's a pretty late sub for the Ramblers. 8.15 and counting left to play in half number one. Ramblers have put five shots on goal here in this first half. It's already above their average per game this season. In terms of shots on frame, Duquesne with the one. Ramblers have had, I believe it's now six corner kicks in this first half. 
the last two being probably two of the better ones is mm -hmm. finally able to get yeah, the something balls at least were challenging. Way better than the ones at the beginning, and people are actually starting to get at least something of their body on the ball. And then we just saw that shot by Margie Brown, and although it went a little high over the net, um, it was good to see Duquesne kind of taking a shot. They only have one other shot on goal, so it was good to see them trying something. Loyola's actually had seven corners, and now Duquesne will have its first corner kick of the match. It'll be taken by Margie Brown, who has two assists this season. Ooh. At the top, trying to control it was Muir. Headed by Lindsey Kraftchik. Brianna Moore trying to keep it alive, but Megan Nemec with Rhodes. Push it ahead offensively. Rhodes still going for the Ramblers. Rhodes mm. trying to get it to Skelton. Excuse me, that's Sabolka the whole time. Yeah. That was Jamie Sabolka. My apologies. Sabolka doing a good job. Wins that eighth corner kick now. Olivia Nab, who has nine career assists, three this year. Mm -hmm. And on top of the goal. Manny Neundorfer. Who only played in two games in her career before taking the starting reins as a third year sophomore. Oh. Ooh, a little yeah. push there by Matissa. Thought she was going to get away with it. <laughs> she did not. So the ball will come back near the halfway line for a free kick for Loyola. Ramblers 6 7 and 2 overall record. The 2 and 5 Barkin Conference play, sitting in 10th place right now. Duquesne 5 5 and 2 overall. 3 2 and 2 in the A 10. Tied. In sixth place to start this Sunday in A-10 play. UMass will be here on Thursday, the Minute Women and the Ramblers. Both myself and Jenna will be back for that one. The duo. <laughs> and again, there's another duo of speed. Olivia Rhodes and James Volk have done a great job on the left side there. Just beating their players just with straight speed. Some may say a dynamic duo. Yeah. <laughs> Olivia Rhodes coming down the sideline to take the throw for the Ramblers. Big win here yesterday by the Loyola men's soccer team over LaSalle. Is there right now? Uh, fifth place, I think it is, in the A-10 standings. They'll have a midweek non-conference game coming up, and then they'll take on Rhode Island here at home next Saturday. It's the men's soccer season, obviously, as well, going down the stretch. How about Loyola Volleyball, 9-0 in mm -hmm. the opening year in the Atlantic 10, winning the last two days over George Mason over at Genteel Arena. And in first place now alone because Davidson lost one of their matches this weekend. Free kick will be taken by Neundorfer. I was surprised when Al Alvine told me that the team was bussing from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. It's about, I think it is about an eight hour, give or take. Definitely on a bus, for sure. It's so it probably, you know, I, I, I think so. I think in the end it's going to be longer because, you know, with a bus, you're hopefully not going uh, too far over the speed limit, let's just say. Mm -hmm. uh, so, plus you're going to take some breaks along the way. Mm -hmm. Like you said, they've had those long stretches of the, the, having. Yeah a break between games so maybe they just wanted to it's only their get third, off campus early. It's only their third game in 21 days. Yeah. Three consecutive Sundays having played. 
And sometimes that's a blessing or a curse. Sometimes having that break is nice to make sure your legs are fresh, but then sometimes having a break that long just kind of just makes you just meh. That's the <laughs> word I would say is meh. Marejo. That's Matisse to her right, feeds it to her, oh, Matisse. So Maya Matisse and Lipkins comes out to credit before Matisse could get a clean shot off. Matisse has just done a great job today being aggressive and winning those 50-50 chances. The touch was just a little too far on that one and the chance before that, but she's been doing a great job with her phys physicality today. Final two minutes of the first half. Mackenzie Leader knocking it to the sideline for a Rambler throw. Rodriguez knocked that away. Nemec shot blocked. Serve back towards the top of the area. Oof. And going in after it's Skelton, but similar to the play on the other side, the keeper, Noondorfer, able to come out, slide, and grab it. Well, the Ramblers, offensively, the second half has been their better half over the course of the year, mm -hmm. scoring 10 of their 17 goals. And then defensively, Nine of the 13 goals the Ramblers have allowed have come in the second half. So we said this a couple of times where <laughs> the second half is usually when things start to happen in Loyola Rambler women's soccer games this yep. season. One of these teams will hope that uh, offensively will be the case for them in the second half, barring, of course, these final 45. We saw Davidson score a very late goal here in the first half a few weeks ago in their 1-0 win over Loyola. 44th minute it was. And we'll avoid that lapse in the final 30 seconds or so. Yep. But here we go. We got Loyola coming up. But I think this halftime is going to be good for both teams. Loyola can kind of take a break, regroup, and try to come back even harder in the second half. But then also Duquesne, I think they haven't really settled into their game yet offensively. This break will probably be good for them to come out and kind of start off strong. Ramblers trying to rush here. Still some time left with the ball in the attacking third. Nab. We'll try to curl it, look like, towards the goal, but that'll wrap things up in the first half. A scoreless game thus far. Five saves in net for Maddie Noondorfer for Duquesne. Nia Lipkins with one stop on the other side for the Ramblers. Look different from what the A-10 used to do with a dedicated host site. A lot of conferences have gone away from that and. Mm -hmm. And this Which I think makes sense. Give the teams that have shown that they're the best in the league to give them the home field advantage. It's another thing that teams are playing for nowadays. Not only that, you look at some of the situations. If you play at a predetermined site and you bring eight teams there, mm -hmm. you play four games on the Thursday, you play two games on the Friday. So you're playing back to back potentially. And then you're yep. coming back. Maybe you'll get a day off on the Saturday and come back on the Sunday mm -hmm. for a championship. So you'd have to win three games in four days. Yep. This way, competitively, you at least get more of a, hey, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, mm -hmm. gonna, which is more traditionally what you're used to playing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a big part of the reason as to why the A-10 and other conferences would go to the host, uh, the higher seed hosting uh, each game. Some, you know, the Missouri Valley Conference would do, you'd have quarterfinals on, you know, two quarterfinal games with yep. two hosts. And then the final four, say, hosted, like Loyola did many yes. years, hosting the final four. In that case, all right, at least you have it broken up a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more. But I think this way you get the best competitive balance. Olivia Rhodes for Loyola, dropping it back for Allie Kilberg, who has gone the distance so far. <laughs> After coming off the bench in her first two games of the season, battling back from a second knee injury over the course of her soccer career. Five months recovery this time around, and it's, it's pretty good. 
yeah, that's <laughs> some, that's for an, great. for an ACL. <laughs> for sure. Talk about physical strength. That's got to take a lot of mental strength as well. Mm. Yeah, also, I mean, not only just getting the need to a point where a doctor says, yes, you're 100%, but then it's the next step of now going out and running on it and cutting and kicking and doing everything that goes with it and feeling mentally 100% that you For can sure. do all those things. Because obviously anybody who suffers any injury, you try to go back out and do stuff, you're going to be worried <laughs> that yeah. any step you take is going to be one that's going to lead to a re-injury. Mm -hmm. But I think for someone in her position at being her fifth year, I think she's like, well, I love soccer. I want to play my last couple games. And she is doing just that. And we know that, you know, she and her family have dealt with worse than, sure. her, than her knee injury. Yep. Uh, we talked about Team Kilberg extensively the last couple of games. And yes. And obviously playing with Allie the last four years, seeing her go through both ACLs, sadly her dad passing, I give all kudos to her for being so mentally strong as she is. Saw her walked out today on senior day with her mother, who you, uh, you described as your, you, you called her. my queen. <laughs> 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 yes. Ramblers, Kale Gilbert with the ball right now from Park Ridge, Illinois. Getting to 60 career games as a Rambler. Two-time All-MVC first-team performer. And to me, there's I feel like there's not a ton of doubt if she played a full season this year, she probably would end up with some recognition on an A-10 team. For sure. I would agree 100%. Elena Abel for the Ramblers moves it on to Taylor Harrison. And now back for Kilberg. A little slower start here to the second half as compared to the start of the contest. Mm -hmm. Pelican back for Harrison. Duquesne looking to counter. Brown gets tripped up. And the foul is called. Margie Brown drawing that call. So a free kick right at midfield for Ashley Rodriguez playing her 66th career game. She made 52 starts. Fifth year senior from Woodbridge, Virginia. A couple of helpers this year. Five in her career. Also with three goals. All three goals in her career, though, have come on penalty kicks, so mm. kind of rare to see that. That he's a kind of a you know that shutdown defender, but when it comes to a penalty kick, she's the one that they go to yeah. uh, more times than not. Oh, that's a great ball. Nemec just can't get there. Called a half step, just too far out in front of her. Picked up by Maddie Neundorfer. Yeah, but going back to Rodriguez, I feel like every team, it's nice to have your fallback person for a PK that you just know is going to step up with confidence. PK is really in soccer, just all about confidence and who has the skill to take it. As we see with the men's side at Loyola, Billy Hensies, the, the men's go-to, and Ashley Rodriguez is that for Duquesne. Duquesne hasn't had an opportunity for a PK this season. So I'm, I'm maybe only assuming that Rodriguez now would still be the go-to person. But mm -hmm. again, looking at her statistics over her career. And you don't know, there's 17 new freshmen. 17, 17 <laughs> true freshmen on this <laughs> roster. Could have a couple of players to turn to. Brianna Moore. And taken by Cassidy. Olivia Rhodes has really solidified her spot at left back. She was playing right back for a while because Liv Nav usually plays on the left side. Yeah, you're right, actually. No, you, you are exactly right. So, been a little bit of shuffling. So, she has solidified her spot on the field yes. one way, wherever it might be, left or right back, because sure. the fact that she has now started 11 games and has played the full 90 in six of the last seven contests. Mm -hmm. Sebulka, Nemec, good play for Cassidy, has Pelican off to the right, into the box for Megan Nemec. That's great defending. 
Terrific job by Lavecchia, the true freshman. Doing exactly what Al Alvine told us she does. <laughs> Powerful, physical, and wins the ball. She does that right there against Nemec. Not intimidated at all. And it's great to see that a freshman is described as big, powerful, and physical. I feel like coming in as a freshman, that's something you kind of have to build up over your four years is your physicality and your powerfulness. But having her be described as that as a freshman is a great attribute for her. Couldn't cleanly defend it that time, though. So it's a corner kick for the Ramblers for the ninth time today. And the first time here in the second half. Here it comes from Nab. Mm -hmm. It's the third or fourth yeah. time today that a corner kick has just been unplayable from the Ramblers. And that's, again, just a wasted opportunity, especially when it doesn't even get in the box for a chance for your teammates to get on it. That's, again, just a wasted opportunity for the Ramblers. See if Duquesne gets some offense going. One shot on goal thus far for the Dukes. Arejo Ooh. wins the ball with a physical battle. A shot that Swanson blocks off the foot of Matisse. Now in the box, two players come together, and Kilberg able to win that against Arejo. Arejo, the leading goal scorer for the Dukes with five on the year and 13 in her career. Moore, mm. I was going to say she went down a little easily there <laughs> from Rhodes, but there was the forearm in the forearm in the back. And yep. hey, if you got to sell it a little bit, do what you, you got to do, you gotta, right? Yeah, if you got to do what you got to do. You never know what the ref's going to call or not. And if you can't really get anything out of it, might as well. If she has her hand on your back, take a fall and get, get the free kick. And Jamie Arejo. Now 25 yards out here, straight on. And the game tying goal last Sunday against Davidson. Arejo with the left foot into the mm. ball and cleared out. Ricocheted off the referee. And it didn't really change how things went here as now it'll be sent wide by Lavecchia. Ball comes cleanly down to the turf, played ahead by Kraftchik over the top of Olivia Rhodes. Matisse and mm -hmm. Moore caused the turnover. It's Moore a step by Moore to the top of the box. Cassidy, she gets pushed mm -hmm. aside by Arejo, who contests the call. Jamie Arejo. Fourth year junior. See Duquesne now. A little bit tougher on their press. Yeah, I do think Duquesne came out a little stronger. I still feel like they are lacking in the creativity department, but they're definitely not lacking in the physicality. They're winning all, a lot of 50 50s, a lot of their success offensively is coming from those aggressive moments. But Definitely pleased with how they came out in the second half. That'll be against Duquesne. Hitting the turf was Megan Nemec. About to enter the 57th minute of the play, scoreless between Duquesne and Loyola. That zero has been on the scoreboard next to Loyola for three weeks. No <laughs> trying to get off but same the with goalless Duquesne. streak. That's what we heard. Same with Duquesne. Yeah, then Duquesne. A couple of yeah, they well the last two games they've scored, but they came they came off of two okay. games in a row where they did not score. So yes. they were able to get themselves back in the okay. offensive flow. Okay. Loyola is still looking to do so. Yeah, and I think whichever team gets the ball in the back of the net today will get 
Definitely more in that offensive flow and take the momentum of the game. Nab. Marejo. The size advantage on Harrison to win that ball. Here comes Rodriguez with a lot of pace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. And they're bringing it back and calling a foul on Loyola yeah. near midfield. So the advantage was being played, but Rodriguez may have had a little, may have been pushed or had her jersey tugged or something along the way. Rajo, or excuse me, Kilberg and Matisse trying on that header. Kraftchik bangs it off of Sabolka for a Duquesne corner for the second time today. Sometimes that's all you need. Just, you don't need to get the cross off, but you get the corner kick. Margie Brown will take it with the right foot. Ooh. Header wide. The attempt by Ali Campanella. Off the goal kick, the second ball taken by Swanson. Here's Sabolka. Nemec is headed toward the penalty spot right now. Sabolka curls one towards the near post. And that had some good movement on it. It almost seemingly was curling away from Noondorfer, but she stays with it, stops that one for her sixth save of the match. Yeah, again, this game is 0-0 in the second half, so why not take a shot? Noondorfer and Lipkins both only have one save, so... Or no, sorry. Lipkins has one, save Noondorfer has six, but still 0-0, zero, zero, so why not take those shots? It's the 11th time in 13 games that Noondorfer has had five or more saves, so yeah. she's been tested a lot. Opponents average over 15 and a half shots per game mm -hmm. against Duquesne. Yep. But her save percentage at 8-11 is fourth in the 8-10. She's 16th in the country in saves per game, almost 6.1 per contest, 6.08 to be exact. Ramblers fans want a call there. By the way, these are Ramblers fans and fans in general. They gave the officials a standing ovation when they showed up today <laughs> because they hustled their way over after a scheduling issue. So there was no fault to the officials on their own. So they made their way over here and got a nice ovation. And now <laughs> as the game is going, it's, hey, Raf, wh what are you doing? Where's of your course. whistle? <laughs> so, you know, it only lasts so long. We are into the 61st minute, Scott Sudikoff and Jenna Ross with you. Loyola, Sala, Sa Loyola Soccer Park in Rogers Park, Chicago. Scoreless, Ramblers and Dukes, first meeting ever between these new Atlantic 10 foes. Pittsburgh versus Chicago. It's a good matchup in the city <laughs> battle. Again, I think Duquesne, talking about battles, has been winning the physical battle for mm -hmm. sure in the second half. However, I don't think their composure on the ball is where it needs to be to find the back of the net. Got some good food in both the cities. <laughs> That's for sure. I think I'm biased on that one. What food do you like better, Scott? Let's give that. I like anything. I'm, <laughs> be, I'm easy to. <laughs> of course, we had Dayton here a couple of weeks ago. We the NIL sponsorship with a, a, a fried chicken place there in the in the Dayton area. Mm -hmm. Honeybees. I'll take some of that. Well, you know. Take whatever you got. Well, the real question is, are you deep dish? Oh, that was a handball. Wow. Or Ray Joe okay, getting a shot. Oh, yeah, nope. Yeah, the whistle. We can't really hear our referee's <laughs> whistle. It's very, very faint, but he's been making all the calls. Uh, no, I'm not I'm not really a deep dish. I mean, I, I can eat it, <laughs> but I'll go, you know, thin crust 
Okay. Eight out of ten times, let's say. Okay, okay. I feel like that's normal. I okay. Like I could eat pizza for every meal, but deep dish is only once in a while. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty filling. As you could tell, we're hungry up here in the booth because an hour, an hour delay, you know, we weren't sure. It's not like we could leave and go get food and come back. We weren't sure. It's, you know, it's throwing off our whole lunch schedule. Foul called against the Ramblers. Free kick coming for. But it looks like we still have a Duke down. Let's see. It is Allie Campanella being tended to by her teammates. Of course, Permantes, the big food establishment in Pittsburgh. Haven't been there in about know, five years. I actually was in Pittsburgh for March Madness last year oh, when right. the Ramblers well, took on Ohio State. Well, and, men's um, basketball going there, correct? Wasn't wasn't a very good showing, but you know, it was still a fun trip. And you didn't go to Permantes, or, or did you? I did not. There was a line out the door for a very long wait. So Makes sense. Didn't get a nice sandwich. Pierogi. Pierogies. Well, you can get those too in Pittsburgh. Mm. Good to know. Good to know. If I ever make it back out. I'm just looking at it. I just, you know, I'm just doing a little search. There's some food items on my phone <laughs> in the interim here as the play restarts. 27.45 on the clock and now substitutions. Brooke Kirstein and Emma Haspodka have come on for Duquesne for the first time today. Sarah Noonan in as well for Loyola. Not as many substitutions in this match that we're used to seeing, especially from the Loyola side. A, a shorter bench so far for Barry Bimby. And I think if I'm seeing correctly, it looked like Loyola went to a three back, moved Olivia Rhodes to the right mid position. So that's something that Duquesne should notice and kind of take advantage of when you have three back there. You can kind of press all your defenders with one person and we'll see if they can get the ball in the back of the net. Foul whistled on Matisa. Oh, I thought it was no, a foul. I yeah, like I said, not that's officially. It definitely looks like a foul, but they just the called it out of bounds. Just called out of bounds for a throw for Loyola. Kilberg. And this will go all the way out and be a goal kick for Duquesne. Last time Loyola won here at home, September the 18th, got a 71st minute goal from Carissa Kuntz, beating LaSalle 1-0 in that game. Maya Matisa showing off her juggling oh, skills there for a ball. while, and now, oh. oh, and the good block defensively by Kilberg. If that gets through, yep. good chance it's going to be one nothing Duquesne. But like I said, Duquesne's been doing a great job with their physicality, building the ball up, but again, their execution in the final third just needs to be better. Good touch of Rajo to Matisa. Kilberg draws the foul on Matisa. Allie Kilberg not shy, sticking nope. her nose in things. A good look at that three back alignment right now for the Ramblers. Rhodes. It's a good oh. defense by Rodriguez. She's been a force to be reckoned with all game. She's done a great job. One of their keys to the game was shutting down Loyola's dynamic players, and I think she's done a good job with that today.
Swanson loses it to Huspodka. That's a great ball. Kraftchik onto it. Kraftchik mm. lofting it towards Lipkins. And for a moment, you're, you're a Loyola fan. Your heart skips a beat <laughs> because you think back to that game at St. Louis where a ball very similarly just sailed over Lipkins and just underneath the crossbar out right against St. Louis. That happened. But mm -hmm. just for a moment there, you're hoping that that ball does not have that perfect type of arc that even a five foot ten keeper like Lipkins couldn't get to. That's a good step too by Lavecki. Lavecchia. Lavecchia. There you go. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Just had one more syllable to get through. <laughs> Substitution for Duquesne. Libby Magica will come on, a freshman from Strongsville, Ohio. Yeah, Coach Alvine said she's super creative and talented attacking-wise, and I think that's what Duquesne needs at the moment, and so hopefully she brings that little spice to them. Yeah, he thinks maybe the purest playmaker that his team has. Which is why I'm shocked that we're just seeing her now, especially when they do have a little bit more offensive momentum. She's out there now, though, with 22-52 and counting in the second half and a scoreless game. Duquesne tied for six to start today with UMass in the 8-10 standings. Inside that top eight to make the 8-10 tournament, Loyola in 10th. Needing a run here in these final three games. Just two games left after today. Rodriguez gets there first and instead of just playing it out of bounds to the mm -hmm. sideline. She's able to play it into some open space Oof. and then use her quickness to get to it. Now Duquesne looking to work from the back line. Campanella over the halfway line for Magica. Magica continues it straight ahead for Arejo. Arejo turning to her left, angling that way, deflects oh. off a of Rambler oh. into the box and went right to Brooke Kirstein. But Kirstein was offside after that deflection there. Yeah. But it she almost was offside uh, out of yeah. a very unlucky deflection from Lane Abel. Aspodka. Tipped away from behind by Cassidy. Comes to Nemec. We'll Crisscross with Sabolka. Noonan's in the box right now. Slide tackle out of bounds by Kraftchik. Corner kick Loyola, number 10. You always like to see something set up for Abby Swanson if you're Loyola here. Mm, this is unusual, Taylor Harrison taking the kick. I can't recall seeing this, at least here at home. Harrison, got answers the penalty spot and headed towards the post there, but covered up by Noondorfer. Well, again. Certainly have come to a point where if you're Loyola, Barry Bimby, you've got to try switching yeah. things up, anything you can, <laughs> knowing that it's a situation where you got to win. If you want postseason, you have to win today to have a chance. And plus there's that added extra. We talked about this at the beginning of the year, the effect of having no overtime. Yeah. You're Loyola here. Normally you look at it and go, okay, we got 20 minutes, but it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. we got 20 more minutes potentially. Yep. Now you don't. You've got 20 minutes. If you don't get a goal, you don't win this game. Yeah. I don't know if mathematically they'll be eliminated yet. It's possible they might be. Yeah, you but never know. for all intents and purposes, you got two games left after, and it would be no postseason. As that is uh, Rodriguez, I believe. Yes, that's Rodriguez. and. Hopefully she's okay. Yeah, she'd be she's greatly missed by the Dukes. Already without Sarah Wilkinson, fifth-year senior, box-to-box -box midfielder, got hurt last Sunday against Davidson. 
didn't really get a timetable on her issue from Al Alvine, just that wasn't sure of her availability coming into today. Tough to tell what the issue is here with Rodriguez with the way Actually, she's holding that right leg, mm -hmm. thigh, quadricep area. Hopefully. See if we get a look at it from our replay angle. Well. It's really tough to tell there. Yeah. Looks like she kind of planted a little weird. There's Al Alvine talking to our official. Love it here as the Duquesne head coach. So play stopped here with 20 minutes, 10 seconds left to go in the second half. Should the very least we'll have to come off the field right now. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Plants that right foot and then just obviously felt something in that upper leg and see her, the way her foot kind of gave way. So Especially in these chillier times, muscles are just, you well never she's, know. You know, she's standing up on the sideline right now, having a drink. So doesn't appear to oh, be. Is she going to come back? She's going to have to come out officially, but then stand obviously and sub back in. It just depends if. Duquesne wants to give her some time or not, but yeah, nope, she's going to go right back to be able to check back in. Show you how tough of a player she is. And earning that warrior tag that Al Alvon gave her. So she's back out there, so Duquesne didn't have to even bother with, a, sure with a substitution for her. All the players can take a, a deep breath there that she's all right. Little push there by Campanella will be whistled. Rhodes. Rodriguez right in the mix of things again looks defensively. Like she's all right. Yeah, it looks like she's <laughs> she's she's doing fine out there. Or even if she's not, she's fighting through it. She's I'm sure she's a little in sore. Her warrior mentality. Mm -hmm. It's obviously a position that you you played. What have you seen from her? Just has made her so solid, just the way she plays. As we mentioned, she's a great one v one defender. Not many people have gotten past her. Megan Nemec being one of the fastest players probably in the league. She's done a great job stopping her. She knows. Being a veteran player, she knows that these dynamic players are going to kind of come in and give her her best shot, but she's done a great job stopping them. And somewhat on the smaller side, but obviously <laughs> takes advantage of the speed that she has. For sure. And both teams, they don't really have much height, so. Kilberg into the box, but can't track it down. Kilberg steps back up, keep it going. Sibolka trying to get some space. Able to get it back in the middle. Cassidy. Cassidy looking for a cross. Oh. Gets one off. Ball still loose in the box. Haspodka for Duquesne able to knock it to the sideline. And Loyola will have a throw, but the Ramblers did a good job not allowing Duquesne to clear that one out of the attacking third, mostly from Ali Kilberg stepping up. Into the corner. Noonan, another Loyola throw. Megan Nemec will leave it off for Jamie Sabolka. Sabolka has won more and more time on the field as the season's gone on, and now three consecutive starts. Of course, uh, haven't talked about her today, really. Madeline Barone mm -hmm. banged up a bit out of the lineup, unfortunately. Junior from Tulsa. Long ball served back in. Oh. And a little tricky. Uh, Neundorfer had to wait a while for that one to come down.
Swanson on the race against Majka. Taylor Harris in for the Ramblers. Sprays it off to Cassidy. Sabolka and trying to go back to Cassidy. Now clear. Arejo is back there for Duquesne. Kilberg will use her keeper, Lipkins. And this one it ended up being a throw down there in the corner. Stopped by Austin Hansen. <laughs> Holding the uh, the camera down there, part of our production crew. You can actually maybe say he's our boss in a way. <laughs> a great boss. Shout out to you, Austin Hansen. <laughs> I feel like this half's been kind of here and there. Both teams kind of have their spurts of success, but neither team has really had a lot of dangerous opportunities in the box, but here we go. Kirstein oh. the shot in diving Lipkins as Kirstein got that ball from Arejo, using her strength in physical play to keep that one going and get it to Kirstein, but Lipkins with her toughest play of the day, and we're still scoreless. Kind of right on cue there, Jenna. You're talking about how well, there's been these these moments here and there, and yeah. here's one for Duquesne. And there's the shot. But I think we had could have seen Brooke there kind of cut across, and maybe we could have seen a ball placed on the ground and had an easier shot off there. I think Duquesne's still lacking the creativity in their runs a little bit. Everything's just kind of seeming straight on and... Again, lacking the creativity on that. Loyola a chance off that cross. It was Cassidy who tried a little tricky touch towards the corner. Less than 15 minutes to go in this one. Scott Sudikoff, Jenna Ross with you. Loyola Soccer Park. 8-10 on ESPN this afternoon. Senior day for the Ramblers. An ultimate home game this season. They'll play at home Thursday against UMass. Duquesne goes home for a game against St. Bonaventure on Thursday. Rhodes will take a shot that gets blocked inside the box. Kilberg back ahead for Cassidy who taps it to Sabolka. Nemec at the corner of the area now looking back to the middle, now to the corner. Cassidy Spot for a left-footed cross that's cut off by the keeper, Noondorfer. And Loyola, 10 corner kicks today to Duquesne's just two. And one yellow card back in the first half to Jamie Sabolka of Loyola. Shots are 12-7 overall. Loyola with the advantage. Duquesne, a couple of substitutions now. Moore and Matissa coming back on. Well, if you're Duquesne, a draw, a point on the road like this, you're going to take it mm -hmm. with your spot right now in the standings inside the top eight. Oh, that's that goes defending. off of Arejo. Elena Abel with a defensive stop. But if you're the Ramblers, a draw is just not going to cut it. Nope. But we still have 12 minutes here for both teams. Both teams kind of, like I said before, are having their opportunities but just can't execute in that final pass. So we'll see what they're going to give us in the last 12 minutes. Like, oh, yeah. Oh. Nemec going down. Looked like she just lost her balance, though. They were yeah. both battling for the ball. The fans are going to want to call there in the box, but you're, you're, just, you're not going to get that. I mean, there wasn't anything. They were both playing a 50-50 ball, and she just lost her balance. Cassidy. Yeah into the area. If you're Loyola, what 
move can you make strategically in the final minutes, though, with this thought process of, okay, we need to win? What, do you, what can they do? Yeah, I think they're just going to have to start taking shots. Like we saw there, Olivia Rhodes starts taking shots from outside of the box. Here, Amanda Cassidy. Cassidy Perfect to Nemec. Oh, oh, and cleared out by Lavecchia, the freshman with a terrific defensive play. Ramblers yeah. trying to keep the pressure on. Yeah, I definitely think we're going to see more of those balls from Olivia Nab, Ellie Kilberg, Elena Abel. They're just going to try to get the balls up there to get their team an opportunity to get the ball in the back of the net. And I give kudos to Amanda Cassidy. She's been all over the field today, finding Megan Nemec there, finding crosses throughout the game. She's done a great job for the Ramblers. Is that a situation there with Nemec? Just one fewer touch, take yep. that shot, not allow Lavecchia that chance to get over there? Yeah, she definitely should have just kind of wound up and hit the ball. She has a great shot, and she has the speed to do it. If I think she'll know for this next possible time. That might be the case. Lavecchia... She thinks she deflected it yeah. off of Nemec, not the call. It'll be a corner. We saw Taylor Harrison take the most looks, recent Loyola corner. And it looks like we have Jamie Sabolka going out for her first corner of the game. Oh, nope, there goes Taylor. Well, they're both heading towards the corner, so you wonder, see what the... Uh, Strategy develops here. Ashley Rodriguez keeping a close eye on things. Comes from Harrison. Oh, that's getting her hands on it. Out. Noondorfer. Rhodes. Mm -hmm. And now a counter. Matisa. It's two on three right now. Brianna Moore as well. Arejo. That's a great find. Running up the middle. Has someone available to her right as well as Kilberg, <laughs> like she barely missed any time. Just steps up and wins yes. it. And now we got a foul on Duquesne. Ramblers want to go. And the referee won't allow that quickly because it, the ball was not put where the foul occurred. Officials will let you go with that if you put the ball further back yep. than where the foul occurred. But obviously the other way around, <laughs> they will not allow that. Headed away from Nemec by Lavecchia. That'll be a throw near the flag for Loyola. Coming down towards nine minutes left in the game. A little repetitive always saying it, but somebody new could be tuning in or hasn't been paying full attention, but no more overtime in regular season soccer. Ball to the six. Oh. Sabolka couldn't find it. Lavecchia comes out with it for Duquesne. Arejo, the lone player out top. Or check that, that's Matisse, the lone player up top. Lipkins, well outside the box. Throw for the Dukes. Krapchik forced back into her corner. Lavecchia's ball up the sideline, stays in play. Brianna Moore coming up hobbled there. She collided with a rambler. Sabolka, Cassidy from behind. Krafchik tipped it away. Slide tackle, Abel. Rambler is able to turn back up upfield on offense. Swanson try to get it to the top of the box for Cassidy. It's the battle of the center backs today. We've talked about a lot about Lavecchia and a lot about Abel, a lot about Kilberg. They've all done a great job stepping up to their mans and winning the balls. Nemec surrounded here. Be a Duquesne throw. And a Duquesne substitution now. Margie Brown is back in. Rodriguez will be putting it back into play for the Dukes. First trip for Duquesne here to Loyola Chicago in the first ever meeting between the two programs. Took in the sights and sounds of Chicago yesterday on a riverboat tour. 
after coming into town on Friday and now hoping to come out with at least a point here today to continue to solidify themselves inside the top eight in the A-10 standings. Ramblers a bit more desperate to find the goal here. On the outside looking in right now in 10th place. Again, as you see there, there's just no movement up top from the Dukes. They, the forwards need to come. They need to find the ball. It's almost like they're looking for the ball to find them. Mackenzie Muir. Here's Brown. Some space in the middle. Arejo. Comes here to the near side, Brianna Moore. Mm -hmm. Taken away by Sebulka. Cassidy trying to feed Nemec, who is trying to hold her ground and turn against Lavecchia, and Lavecchia carries it forward. Knocked away from behind. Oh. And a shot oh. that curls wide of the post by Maya Matisa. And you can see how just like that, <laughs> Duquesne almost puts one on the board. Less yep. than six minutes left as Matisa about a foot off target. Loyola crowd, very good one on hand here today despite the temperatures. Taking in senior day and an hour delay and they've hung in and they know the situation for this Rambler team. Now it's been a struggle to score and how important getting one today and winning is right now for the standings and just just overall for the team. Here comes a shot that's deflected. It looked like deflected him from my vantage point off Lavecchia. Hard to tell how much it changed course, but Noondorfer there either way. Nemec. Yeah, Nemec just trying to get anything on it. You never know what you're going to get it deflected. It could go right in the net from there. I've seen goals like that in person where a keeper's come maybe to the top That's of the box. That's a great ball. Oh. Went through Muir. Yeah, if only Muir could get a touch on that. Mar Margie Brown. But again, all your red bodies in the box are now just standing stationary. Mm. She can't find anyone to pass the ball to. So it allows the defense to zone in. Yep. On the ball handler and Collapse and cause the ball to be chained over in possession. Nemec. With the left foot. Cross, oh. chance, Cassidy. Oh. And Neuendorfer earns her ninth save of the match. Yeah, Cassidy is getting the touch off and the shot off right away. It's really all you can ask for. Yeah. You just don't want it to go straight to the keeper. You know, the window the window was closing very quickly, so yep. she did not have really much time to eye a spot to shoot that one. Nemec has Noonan to her right. Megan Nemec sprays it out wide. Swanson a shot. Oh. It's going to be another corner. Deflection off of it, yep. the Ramblers right now I'd be looking for number 19 Olivia Rhodes they've gone long in all their all their corner kicks this year so if they try to play short to Rhodes she could get a shot off oh. header able <gasps> and oh. then sent wide by Swanson but looks like it was deflected for deflected by kick. Duquesne Taylor Harrison. They do go to Rhodes this time. Rhodes. <laughs> Are they hearing me this game? I swear. Maybe. Might have the headphones on on the sideline <laughs> listening to Jenna Ross and going, hey. <laughs> 
Let's try what Jenna's talking about here. Unfortunately, does not work out. Two minutes left. Ellis Skelton coming on. Still scoreless. Looks like we have another formation change, adding Ellis Skelton up for a third forward up there. Yep, again, one point. Just not going to do it here for the Ramblers. Certainly better than a loss, but in terms of looking towards postseason, they need the three. Yep. Can they find the goal here in the final 90 seconds? Swanson. Nemec. And it's going to be another, another corner, corner as Mackenzie Leader really had no, op no option other than to do what she did yep. and smartly does it. For sure. Didn't try to get too tricky. Olivia Nab with one minute left will take the corner with her right foot. Brown able to loop it over her head. This is a great counter attack opportunity for the Dukes. That's out of bounds for a Duquesne throw with 45 seconds left. You're not going to rush, rush, I don't think, here if you're the Dukes. I mean, of course, you'd love to find the back of it in the final 30 seconds here, but you don't want to make a mistake and give up the game losing goal and lose that point. You know, you're, if you're Duquesne, you know you're inside that top eight right now with yep. a couple of games left. You just got to add a point in there and help to solidify that spot. 15 seconds to go. Ramblers going to need to launch one if they want a chance. This gets deflected back the other way. And the time will come off the clock. Unfortunately for the Loyola Ramblers, it'll be a fifth consecutive scoreless game for them. On the bright side, they get a couple of saves shut out from their keeper, Naya Lipkins, a 0-0 draw. Ramblers and the Dukes in the senior day game for Loyola. Ramblers, two games left on their schedule. Be home for UMass on Thursday and the next Sunday. Be on the road at Richmond, while Duquesne home for St. Bonaventure on Thursday and the next Sunday at George Washington. We'll be right back. We'll wrap things up here on the 810 on ESPN.